Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. The road ahead is not going to be easy. It never is, especially for folks like you and me. Because while we've come so far, the truth is that those age-old problems are stubborn. And they haven't fully gone away. I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Blue Monday, I'm a high blue Monday. Got to work, lack of sleep. Stop it. Censor that song. We have to go back to Fats Domino and take out work like a slave all day because that's offensive. It's offensive to so many Americans and make them feel insecure. So she's at it again. She did it last year. Another graduation speech attacking Whitey again. Oh, in a subtle way. She's a she's a victim. I mean, the first lady is a victim. And I think the only cure is maybe another 71 to 72 personal assistants drawn from the military. I think all white males, captain and above in the U.S. Marine Corps, should be immediately mustered out of the military and turned into her personal assistants in order to make up for Michelle Obama's pain. And perhaps a few more trans world vacations at our expense, with her mother, of course, might make her feel a little better about the racism of America. It's sickening. It's disgusting. It shows she's immature. It shows she was never qualified to be first lady. It shows you how far she's drug uh, the, the, the office of the presidency down to her husband's level. But there's more to it than meets the eye. This is their stock and trade. In addition to attacking police, and oh, by the way, cop killings have doubled as a result of the president, Barack Obama. Uh, let us see who else. Bill de Blasio in New York. Oh, who else? Al Sharpton and everyone in the media and their hate campaigns, which have been launched for two years now. Now cops are getting killed on a regular basis. I couldn't sleep last night thinking about the pain of the family in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, of the two cops who stopped the car in an ordinary traffic stop, and because of Barack Obama's hate, and because of Eric Holder's hate attack upon, upon police, and Al Sharpton's vicious, vicious, vicious scum mouth, the cops are no longer protecting themselves. They're letting the vermin kill them first. Thank you, Shopton. And this is all she can talk about. It's about her again. Instead of apologizing for what she's done to America, how she's insulted the office of the First Lady, instead she goes to the Tuskegee Institute, an all-black college, which is interesting unto itself. I don't know of any all-white colleges, do you? But nevertheless, she goes to an all-black college where the kids are generally very smart and very good students, and instead of leaving them alone to go forward in their lives as equals, she tells them they're not really equal and that there's a lot of racism in America. All right, what can I do about it? Talk about it. That's all. All I can do is talk about it. Listen to this. Listen to clip number two of your first lady, Michelle Obama. Listen to this. It's sickening. I didn't start out as the fully firm formed first lady who no, stands before you either. today. No, no, I had oh, my share no. of bumps along the way. Oh, you're but suffering. But as potentially the first African American first lady, I was also the focus of another set of questions and speculations, speculations, conversations sometimes rooted in the fears and misperceptions of others. No, not fear. Was I too loud or too angry or too emasculating? Yes, you are. You're all of those things. And it has nothing to do with fears or misperceptions. Anyone who doesn't see that in you is not seeing reality. Anyway, happy Mother's Day. I had a nice Mother's Day yesterday. I went to the North Beach restaurant. Yes, I paid for my meal. I am not uh, the former mayor or, or others in the city who seem to think that there's a perennial free check, so I hear, including a talk show host who uh, has been eating for free for the last 30 years in an old, dirty Aloha shirt. No, I insist on paying my bills, 
And um, Teddy loved it. Teddy had a wonderful Mother's Day. I don't know what he ate. He ate a bowl of water and chicken, right? We always get chicken for Teddy. Broiled chicken, no salt, no pepper. And I usually get it first for the dog, and I'm his food taster. It's actually the best appetizer in the, on the menu, so that's why I order it from. And then I always say it's too hot for the dog. Let me taste it first. <laughs> usually I'm starving till they feed me. I eat too much bread. I drink too much alcohol. So it's better that I eat the dog's uh, appetizer first. So here's what we're going to talk about, I think, so far. I'm going to talk about Michelle Obama's racism and how she won't stop and let it go. We are going to give you a Band in Britain update because now that the conservatives have won a plurality in England and do not need the liberal Democrats for their coalition, we are hopeful that Mr. Cameron will finally take Michael Savage's name off the Band in Britain list. Because make no mistake about it, not Rush Limbaugh or one of his girlfriends or boyfriends or minions but Michael Savage is the only member of the American media who is not allowed to enter Britain because of the blacklist that they created based upon a smear campaign. And I'm tr still trying to get my name off the list. So I'm working with a major, major newspaper, which I will not mention until it's set in stone. We're going to send a letter to Mr. Cameron. And I'll tell you more about what we're going to say to him about free speech because no one in the media knows more about free speech than I. That's also coming later. And today is the first day of the rest of my life. And it's the day that uh, sorry, Countdown to Mecca is in bookstores. Or they better be there. And you're going to go and be my little soldiers, my armies of the day. I want you to be my armies of the bookstores, ladies especially. I want you to go in and look for Countdown to Mecca. Go to the big chain stores. If the book is not prominently displayed, would you please report to the show, either in this show today, because, hey, it's only uh, 10 after 12 here on the West Coast, 10 after 3 on the East Coast. Oh, by the way, the terrorists have an attack. They threatened the catastrophic event that, uh, ooh, an hour and a half ago, I guess the world is waiting, shaking in their boots. But apparently the hackers uh, who cut people's heads off, who have their hands tied behind their back or rape children under the age of eight as part of their religious beliefs, ISIS threatened an attack today at 2 p.m. Eastern, and since it's now 10 after 3 Eastern, we don't know where the attack may have come. A group of hackers, and I love our intelligence community, doesn't know how to stop them. You hear this? That's what they have trillions of dollars for. Meanwhile, Department of Homeland Security, I understand, spends more money on global warming, the big lie, than they do on radical Islamists ready to strike. You hear this? Who's Jed Johnson anyway? Where did he come from? Where did Obama dig this guy up from? I have no idea who Jed Johnson is. Jed Johnson. A real hero. A great hero of the American way. Anyway, a group of hackers affiliated with ISIS were threatening to carry out a cyber attack today at 2 p.m. Eastern. So far as I know, uh, they haven't done it yet, but we're all sitting here sh shaking in our boots, being protected by uh, Jed Johnson, I suppose. He, could have, he may take credit and say that he, he averted it. Ah, yes, indeed. What else is in the news? What else am I going to talk about? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you today. Over the next few days and weeks, I'm going to read two pages a day from Countdown to Mecca. I'm also going to play for you a wonderful interview I did this morning with World Net Daily on the Band in Britain story that I just told you about. I'm going to give you all the breaking news. And wait, if that's not enough for you, if that's not enough for you, we're going to play clip number four right now of Michelle Obama, the picked-upon first lady who was just so hurt, just so injured, and just so oppressed from racist America. Listen to 04. So yeah, I planted a garden and hula hooped on the White House lawn with kids. I did some mom dancing on TV. I celebrated military kids with Kermit the Frog. I asked folks across the country to wear their alma mater's T-shirts for college signing day. But what does that have to do with why you're the most despised first lady in American history? Why don't you talk about why you are despised and why you're not trusted? How about your anger and your hatred towards white people, which literally pours out of your mouth every time you open it? Number two, how about your abuse of power? How about the fact that you have 71 to 72 personal assistants at public expense? How about the fact that everyone knows you're a monster behind the scenes 
And how about the fact that I can prove it by the fact that you fired your florist? Listen, not all of us are suffering memory loss, Mrs. Obama. In fact, many of us can see exactly who you are. So don't think by telling us about mom dancing on TV, we're going to forget it. And speaking about memory loss, for those of you who are health conscious and frightened of everything you eat and drink, which seems to be America's pastime, America's hobby seems to be frightened of everything. They're afraid of uh, fat. They're afraid of sugar. They're afraid of salt. They're afraid of ISIS. And I don't know which one frightens them more. I think they're more afraid of gluten than they are of ISIS. But nevertheless, also on the Savage Nation today, something no other host can give you, 20 medications that cause memory loss. You're not going to believe which common pill you're taking that will probably, over the long haul, weaken, if not destroy, your synapses and your memory. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. They will make assumptions about who they think you are based on their limited notion of the world. And my husband and I know how frustrating that experience can be. We've both felt the sting of those daily slights throughout our entire lives. The folks oh who crossed the street in fear of their safety. The clerks who kept a close eye on us in all those department stores. The people at formal events who assumed we were the help. And those who have questioned our intelligence, our honesty, even our love of this country. Well, you sure love the country. How stupid can we be that we gave you Air Force Two to gallivant around the world? Of course you love the country. I'd love it too. Have the mother in the White House at public expense and no one dare say a word. What could be better? Sure you love the country now because it's uh, catering to you, bowing down to you. Yeah, we question your loyalty to America. We question your husband's policies because that's the American way. And if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. Isn't that an old American statement? If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. Well, apparently Michelle Obama can't take the heat. No, anything anyone says to her, any kind of political commentary or criticism is apparently to her racism. And you notice how her accent changed in front of the Tuskegee audience, sort of like Hillary. She has a, a, a lady of many accents. That's pretty interesting. Here she grew up in a black middle class family, went to Ivy League colleges, and all of a sudden the accent changes to an innuendo style accent. Whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. There's a good rock and roll song, whatever. Oh, Jed Johnson warns Lone Wolf could strike at any moment. As far as I'm concerned, Jed Wolf struck already. He opened up the borders and started talking about global warming. It sounds like a lone wolf struck the DHS. Play clip number 15 to the lone wolf running the Department of Homeland Security. Let's hear this one. We're very definitely in a new phase in the global terrorist threat. Blah, blah, where blah. The so-called lone wolf blah, could strike blah, at any blah. moment. Yeah, Which right. is why <clears throat> the FBI, in my judgment, has done an excellent job yeah, yeah, of judgment. interdicting those who are attempting yeah, to travel yeah, to yeah, Syria, yeah. Who, yeah, yeah. who commit overt acts in furtherance of material support to terrorism. Um, right, right, right. It is a new environment, right, but we are not discouraging Americans from doing the thing as they do on a daily basis. What does that mean? What kind of stupidity? Is this country as stupid as I think it is? How could this man get away with bureau speak like this? He didn't say a damn thing. Well, how can he? He's a puppet. Whatever they write for him, he speaks. Okay, 855 I had a nice Mother's Day. Living well is the best revenge. I took a fall on Saturday. I didn't break anything. That's interesting. You know, when you're an older guy and you fall, you think you're, you know, like it's your last fall. I fell. I hit the c cement. And all I did was bruise my palm and my knee. And uh, nothing broke. How is that possible? And I don't, I don't take CalMag. And I avoid all dairy. So obviously, I have very low calcium stores from food sources and from vitamin sources. And yet my bones are not brittle. Uh, it must be the vitamins, the uh, vodka, the, the three V's. Vitamins, vodka, and vitriol keep me going. <laughs> Doc Savage's three V vitamin all in one. <laughs> 
<laughs> vitamins, vodka, and vitriol. That's funny. There's a certain ring to it. Teddy is so beautiful. I don't know. I love this dog. He's, the people say how old is he? He looks two. He's 10. I dread him dying. I don't know. I just can't think of it. I just don't. The other one's in a box already on the bureau, the ashes. Sometimes I look at the picture of the other one. I'm not ready to put him in the ash box yet. I don't know. I, I am counting the days. They live long, little dogs. I get fatalistic about my dog. They say, oh, stop it. He's a, he's a, he's a small dog. They live longer. Then someone said, well, why do dogs die so young? And the smartest woman in the world that I know, you know what she said? Tell this to your children because children get frightened over death. This woman is so smart. That's why she's lived with me all my life. She's the only one who can put up with me. But she said, the reason that dogs, well, pets die before, in general, unless they're turtles. Unless you keep a turtle, they outlive you. That, that's a separate story. The reason dogs, let's put it that way, die before us is otherwise if we die before them, they'd have no one to take care of them. So God is so good, they set it up so they die before us. That's kind of nice. It's comforting. It's nice. Dog heaven, somewhere up there. You know, somebody up there likes them. And there's a picture of me. Oh, is it on my website yet of me and Teddy dining in the restaurant? And I paid for the dinner. It's not a freebie. MichaelSavage.com. I'm not the guy in the Aloha shirt. Did the picture go? Oh, there it is on the left side on the countdown to Mecca. I don't look good in the picture. It's photoshopped, it looks. I don't know. I, I don't photograph well. I'm not in television. No makeup. No, no, no nothing. I actually look good in the picture itself. I don't know. I'm, still, I'm in good shape for a guy my age. I'm in very good shape. I'm in better shape than I was at 30. How does that work? My eyebrows are still black. I can see that. Let me look at the picture. Nice, uh, nice glasses. He's going on and on about himself. Yes, I'm going on and on about myself. You don't like it? Go listen to someone else. See if I care. It's my show. What do you want me to do? Make believe I... Here's how to look at it instead of getting mad. And by the way, don't get mad. Just go away. That's all. That's all. You know, go away. Here's the thing. It's make believe I own a restaurant or a bar, and I'm the bartender or owner. I'm talking to you about my life and my restaurant. You'd listen to it, right? Because it's my restaurant. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Uh, actually, it's a tennis court that we repainted some lines <laughs> when I came into office. Uh, so it's a combination basketball tennis court. Uh, there is a putting green that President Eisenhower put in. Can you imagine, by the way, if I had put in a putting green? <laughs> Things have changed. Gee, I wonder why people didn't resent Eisenhower putting in a putting green, but they resent you abusing your office so regularly to go golfing on Air Force One. But you see, when you are a glib con man, you say things in front of your uh, acolytes, they laugh, and you think the world is an oyster and everyone believes you. But no, most of the world despise you. In fact, not only do American conservatives look right through this first couple, did you hear what happened today? Four of six Gulf rulers are skipping Obama's Middle East lecture tour. In fact, the new king of Saudi Arabia told him an hour before he's not going. So, you know, the king has no clothes. They can look right through this con man. They know he's a stooge of Iran. And Saudi Arabia is not even going to the conference because he's going to lecture them on human rights. Can you believe this? He's going to lecture them on human rights. And not say a word to Iran. So don't tell me we can't see the, the picture. God sees the truth but waits. I see the truth and I don't hesitate to tell it to you like it is. Because that's my one and only job. Forgive me if you find what I may say slightly offensive at times. I have one job. You know what that job is? Is to keep you listening and tell you like I see it. Call them like I see them. That's my whole job. It's that simple. What else do you want me to talk about? You want to tell, give me the government party line? I don't work for, for Westinghouse. I don't work for NBC. I don't work for a CBS. I'm not Bill Maher. I'm not one of the, the, uh, the stooges, the government jesters with the fake audiences that every once in a while they throw out a conservative line and make believe that they're really not a government jester. They're on lock, stock, and barrel. They may as well be trained by the CIA to, to put out the rubbish they put out, with the laugh lines. They're like Obama in front of a stooge audience. 
So there it is. So of course you're going to be offended by certain things that people say if you live in a world that's so constrained. All 19 women failed Army Ranger School in its first phase. Boo-hoo. Well, why don't you change the rules? I guess it's a racist white male thing. Ranger School. It's not feminist enough. I think they should make it easier for women to pass the Ranger School. Then anyone could be a Ranger. The way anyone could be a sociology professor. Oh, okay, what's the point? Look, I could do this day in the, my hand behind my back. Liberals over conservatives, nine to one at college commencements. Gee, I'm shocked by that. Isn't it odd that I am one of the most distinguished graduates of the University of California at Berkeley with a real PhD with 25, 28 books to my credit, many bestsellers, and I've never been invited to UC Berkeley to give a speech. Instead, they invite liberal slime to give graduation speeches, including the uneducated dolt, Nancy Pelosi, who last year at graduation got up there like the moron she is and said, what was the word she used? Disruptors. I remember it. She said, be a disruptor. Go out there and be a disruptor, said Nancy Pelosi. So they burnt Oakland to the ground. They smashed up cars in Oakland, California. I guess they uh, were, were the disruptors. And do you know why she wanted them to be disruptors? Do you know why Hillary tells them to be wild and free and crazy? Do you know why Al Sharpton wants the cities to burn? Do you know why Obama and Eric Holder want the mobs uh, raging? So they stay away from the White House lawn. You don't understand it. It's called diversion. Now, speaking of diversion, I wrote Countdown to Mecca, which was a really great novel. Was, I mean, when I wrote it. And I'm afraid that what's going to happen is it's going to be misinterpreted and attacked they're going to say I'm calling for the bombing of Mecca, which is the exact opposite of what the novel is about. And I have to defend myself today. The novel is now in the bookstores or putatively there, should be there. I want you to go there and check after the show. Or if you're walking around on a, on a mobile device, go to a local bookstore and ask for Countdown to Mecca and call this program at 855-407-282. Because I know the publisher, let's put it to you this way, I don't know anything, I suspect They've been very uncomfortable with this book from the beginning. I know the bookstores are afraid to show it. I know that we're living in a new age where only politically acceptable books are featured, like uh, Jenny Married Two Mommies or Jenny Had Three Goats. I don't know, whatever it may be. So I did an interview this morning to set the record straight. No, let me take a call. David on WABC has an interesting co uh, comment. David, go ahead. What's on your mind? What happened? Hi, Michael. I'm David. I'm calling from the New York metropolitan area, although I live in New Jersey. I'm an ordained minister, and I was invited to uh, preach at a African-American church in New York. Uh, I know you know New York, 7th Street between B and C Avenue. By oh, yeah, yeah, the East Village, the old East Village. Absolutely. In fact, it's right where the fire occurred. About two months ago, the the building that blew up from the gas main. Hello. Yes, I was. All right, I know the area. There used to be a great restaurant there. I know everything by food. So, what's on your mind? Well, I was preaching, you know, Mother's Day message, and I suggested, you know, buy your mother some flowers, take her to a restaurant, and if you don't have anything else to do, get her Michael Savage's new book, Countdown to Mecca which I'm awaiting, uh, I said probably tomorrow, the next day it should be available, that's a great book, or the upcoming, you know, the, the Civil War, or, uh, but I would suggest Countdown to Mecca. They had invited me to dinner after the service. The thing is, once I said Countdown to Mecca, they disinvited me to the Mother's Day dinner. Well, that's very tolerant and liberal of them, isn't it? They haven't read the book, but they banned you already. Amazing, and they had a photo inside the church, Michael, inside the church of a President Obama with a saying, yes, we can. So I just, you know, went home. No I, guess they're, I guess they're bigoted. I guess, can you say blacks are bigoted? Is it possible? Yes, sir. I, are, there back, are there bigoted blacks, or are you not allowed to say that? Well, they're I think it's, or is it limited only to white people? And they're a bigoted uh, Hispanic. I'm Hispanic. Really? I'm shocked. Are they bigoted Chinese? I would be shocked to find out that that's so. Absolutely. <laughs> you mean they're a bigoted Japanese? I don't believe that. No, only white people are bigoted. You know, it's sad that they're so narrow-minded in that church, but I appreciate you're going to bat for me, and let me send you a free copy right now. But before we uh, uh, leave this topic, since today is the launch uh, of the book, I want to play a little bit of why I'm talking about it to you today. Listen, here's this what morning, I did this morning. I was interviewed by World Dead Daily about my novel Countdown to Mecca which is in the bookstores today.
I'm here with Dr. Michael Savage, author of the latest novel, Countdown to Mecca, also the author of various other books, including nonfiction works such as Stop the Coming Civil War. Michael, in your last book, you got in trouble with the Chinese, using them as the culprits. This time, your book explores blowing up Mecca. Do you expect a similar reaction from your new novel, Countdown to Mecca? Well, I don't call for blowing up Mecca. This is the thing. This is what the liberals are going to do. The same liberals who smeared me and got me banned from England are going to say my novel Countdown to Mecca is too controversial to publish and it should be burned. That's the opposite of what the book is about. The book is about a renegade group of top generals who plot to blow up Mecca. And Jack Hatfield, my hero, gets wind of the plot in a, in a roundabout way and races to stop it. And guess who tries to stop him? The CIA. It's a pretty damn good novel. And in these incendiary times, it's right on time because it shows what could happen given the militancy of radical Islam and the passivity of Barack Obama. There could be a renegade group of generals who plan some catastrophic event to stop this madness that has been going on for millennia against the West. And as we all know, that would lead to Armageddon, which none of us would benefit from. Dr. Savage, your critics accuse you of being militant in your books and miss the nuances of your characters. Do you feel the Chinese really are that militant? I could answer that very simply. The Chinese are on a militant course, are they not? Didn't we read that they're building aircraft carriers? They're committed to cyber war against us? I mean, how wrong was I? Just because we're doing trade with them and the traders in the industrial world could care less about tomorrow and live only for today? I was wrong? I don't think I was wrong. We know that radical Islam is on the move. The FBI says so. They tell us, DHS now tells us, uh, to expect an attack any second. They're spending more money at DHS on, on global warming than they are on protecting us from these sleeper cells in America. We're living in very crazy, dangerous times. I don't have to tell you that. But I had to go to the novel, Countdown to Mecca, to get some of my ideas across that I'm reluctant to state on the radio show for fear of boycotts, etc., that's why I wrote the book. You've had sympathetic Muslims as characters in past novels, and you have a diverse cast of characters. What else have you added for Countdown to Mecca? We all know that, that there are several different varieties of Christians and several different varieties of Jews and Hindus and Buddhists and, and um, Muslims. Uh, no one, none of them are monolithic. Uh, we have Jordan and Egypt joining in an air war against the uh, crazed forces in Yemen. We understand that. We understand that we have a president who's on the side of Iran rather than on the side of Saudi Arabia. In fact, you saw the news that this new Saudi king gave Obama a one-hour notice that he's not coming to his summit. Can you believe that the king of Saudi Arabia, an ally of ours since the 1950s, does not trust the character in the White House any more than I do or you do because they know he's in Iran's camp? So not everyone is as gullible as the New York Times about Barack Hussein Obama. I'm not alone on this, uh, but get, getting back to the novel, which is why you're interviewing me, Countdown to Mecca, look, l let's be clear. I have a problem in the beginning, which I really shouldn't even disclose to you, but I have to. The publisher was afraid of this book from the first second. They try to get me to change the title. Now they won't promote it. They will not even do a mailing to my own list, if you can believe this. I asked them to mail to my 100,000 person list at World Net Daily about the novel's publication today. They refused to do it. I think that they want the book to go away. They want it buried. They don't want it out there. Now, remember, this is the publisher who published Abuse of Power and A Time for War, and they did very well with them. So this is the third and last in the trilogy called Countdown to Mecca. The fact is the publisher, I think, doesn't want it to go anywhere. I mean, that's what I see happening. I would ask my audience to go into a bookstore today, tomorrow, Wednesday, and see if it's even there. If Countdown to Mecca is not there, demand that it be put where it belongs, because otherwise this important message will not get out there. And the message is simple. A terrorist attack has been put into motion by both sides, and the one man who might be able to stop the attack is Jack Hatfield, a freelance reporter who has never shied away from controversy. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com 
The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The Savage Nation. I'm not in a rock and roll mood. Turn it I don't know. Uh, thanks, guys, for picking. I mean, it's not pleasing to my ear. I just decided I don't want to hear it. That's all. It's Monday after Mother's Day. I'm having a letdown because my family's in an airplane now going. I'm the only one left here. I don't feel good. I don't like it. They're all going to L.A. now. I'm left alone because I'm on the radio. This is what the sacrifice I make. They're leaving like in an hour. And they're, they're, you know, I'm, I'm stuck here. They're going to L.A. I, I don't like that. I sacrifice everything for the show. I'm not complaining. I'm not Michelle Obama. I'm not complaining. I'm not Barack Obama. I'm glad I have. What's the plane? It's attacking me or what? It's too close to the studio. Can the sound coming right through the microphone? All right, let's take some callers. WABC in New York. Ethan, welcome. Go ahead, please. Michael, thanks for the show. Hey, listen, I just wanted to say that uh, I think that your fiction writing is bleeding a little bit into your talk radio work because you're stating your opinion that uh, the majority don't like Michelle and don't like Barack as fact, and that's just a falsehood. I'm a I don't think I said the majority, did I? I said the majority of taxpayers, if you listen carefully, not the 93 million not working who live on government benefits. Of course they love Michelle. And of course they love Obama because he buys their, 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 their happiness and their votes. Of course, men like you probably have plenty of money. And I think you suffer the, the mental illness of liberalism. You don't even know what this man's doing to your country, do you? I like it. You're, you're perspicacious. The last time I called, you accused me of being a hedge fund manager. and uh, you're... I don't know who, sir, I don't really know who you are. I have nothing against you. I have nothing for you. We could argue from today until tomorrow over Barack Obama. The man is the most divisive, hated president in American history. Now, it is true amongst government uh, beneficiaries, he's loved because he knows exactly how to play the game. But how can you as a good liberal, how can you not understand why people resent him and it has nothing to do with race? Do I have to read the litany of offenses against this nation? I understand it, but I disagree with it. I think he's done a terrific job, and I'm looking forward to President Clinton. So you like, you like the spying on every American. You think that's a good thing. I'm not a fan of that, but I think that that began with... Well, wait, and you, li you like the fact that he used the IRS to target his political opponents. You like, the, you like that kind of nation. I don't like that either, but I don't have to like... Wait, wait, wait a minute, let's go down the list. Wait a minute, let me read a few others. A few of the other insults, because apparently you see the, the world the way I do. So how could you not like those things? You like the fact that he has purged the military of great patriotic American males in order to replace them with women who are so inferior to them in every way from a military perspective? You think that makes us a stronger nation? No, I think we're strong and we remain very strong militarily. And your fantasy that Obama is weakening America is purely fantasy. And it belongs in your novel. And I wish your novel's great success. Well, you want to talk about him weakening the, mili excuse me, weakening the military? Or you want to just direct your vitriol at me without the facts? No, there's no vitriol. I respect your opinion, but I don't agree with it. That's all. Okay, so let's talk about how he has weakened the military. I can spend the whole book on that. Uh, I can talk about his naked Marxist presidency. I can talk about uh, his radical accomplices and what they've done to the country. I can talk about his treating our friends like enemies and our enemies like friends, such as Israel. I can talk about the thieves and murderers that work for him. But let's focus on the thieves. Has anyone who stole $500 million on the Solyndra scandal gone to jail, as far as you know? I have a list of the people who've gone to jail with me, if you'll let me read it. Well, no, I'm asking you. The thieves who got government grants and loans for at least $500 million to, to build some kind of energy uh, entity, who then bankrupted themselves, it was, they were investigated by the FBI right at the beginning of Obama's reign, and none of them have been punished yet. Isn't that true? I, I don't know if that's true, but it sounds to me like part of your... Well, I wouldn't make that up. Nobody from Solyndra has been indicted by Barack Obama because they're part and parcel of his campaign. How about all the others who have taken billions and billions of dollars on false energy contracts who are stealing us, robbing us blind, Ethan? I mean, if you're really fair-minded, you'd be offended by it. I appreciate it. I would send you a countdown to Mecca, but I know you won't read it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how I hear Blue Monday. Got to work, like a slave all day. Here come Tuesday. Yowza, yowza, yowza. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, to the only Tory radio show in the United States of America. I realize I'm a Tory. I don't know what a Tory means, where that comes from. Mm. But I promise not to tell you a tall story. So the Tories won in England. They are the anti-laborites, the anti-communists, basically, in England. You have two primary factors in England. You have the Tories or conservatives. They're not nationalists at all. The UKIP party was, was, the, was the nationalist party. And then you've got the commies disguised as socialists, disguised as laborites. And um, I was banned in Britain in 2009. And I'm going to repeat it over and over again until you hear what I'm saying to you. Bill Maher is not banned from entering England. Oh, he's wild and crazy. Don't you love all the guys with check pants on their soles pretending to be wild and crazy guys? like Bill Maher, who don't say anything that's politically incorrect. I mean, this is what I'm saying. Politically incorrect? Yeah, right. Government stooge. I'm the only one banned in England. Forget all the other talk shows who pretend to be wild and crazy. I wish I wasn't banned, but I am banned. And it's eaten me alive since 2009 because I've not been able to get that dental care that England's famous for. I can't uh, go to England for the famous cuisine, the food they're famous for. I can't get fish and chips anywhere here on a... But the point is, it's a very serious issue because I want to get off that list. And I want Cameron to listen to my appeal. So I want to talk about that for a bit, as well as Mother's Day, read from my new novel, Common Medicine is the Cause of Memory Loss, and every other news story I can think of that's of any interest to you. So let's begin with a caller on WABC in New York. Ed, welcome and thank you for calling the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Michael, uh, thanks for taking my call. I've been dying to talk to you for years. Of the uh, big five talk show hosts, I think that you're the most interesting. You're the kind of person you could talk about issues. In a, uh, well, we all like to think we're the most interesting, but what's the main point today, Ed? I think you want to make a main point. I think you brought up a hundred points that I was interested in, but the First Amendment is the one that struck me uh, right off the bat, and, and later Jay Johnson. But um, the fact that you're banned in Britain, the fact that you have difficulty publishing your book because it, it involves uh, the Muslim faith, and the fact that some of these countries we assume are free countries like Canada and um, Great Britain do not really have true First Amendment rights. Right. Now, so this is an important point, which is why I took your call, Ed. Britain does not have a First Amendment. However, my being banned has nothing to do with the First Amendment. And that's the most important point of my appeal, incidentally, Ed, when I, when I directed to the new Prime Minister Cameron. And I want to thank you for calling. I'm sending you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca. But here's what I must do right now for all my listeners. <clears throat> Back in 09, when I was banned, I desperately tried to get my name off the list. I was terrified of the, of the blacklist because I thought it would metastasize and I'd be banned from entering any other country, you know, with the EU. I really did. Thank God that didn't happen. So I wrote a letter to the prime minister who banned me, Gordon Brown. And I'm going to read it to you. It's an, it's an important letter. It's a historically important letter. Those of us interested in the First Amendment and free speech should pay careful attention to what I wrote. It was very carefully crafted. There's no vitriol in it. Listen. The Prime Minister, 10 Downing Street, London, Southwest 1A, 2AA, June 8th, 2009. Dear Prime Minister, I'm a radio show host in the United States. It is with great hope that I write to you personally in relation to my treatment at the hands of the former Home Secretary of the Government of the United Kingdom, Miss Jackie Smith. As you may be aware, my name was recently included on a list of individuals excluded from the United Kingdom. I understand the policy under which the list was compiled is aimed at excluding individuals who stir up, justify, or glorify terrorism, 
encourage others to participate in terrorist acts, engage in serious criminal activity, or encourage others in such activity, or foster hatred, which might lead to intercommunity violence in the United Kingdom. The decision to exclude me was plainly arbitrary and based on sound bites taken out of context. Moreover, the circumstances of the decision were, were on, on any view quite extraordinary. I had made no request or given any indication that I proposed to visit the United Kingdom. Nonetheless, in or around December of 2007, Ms. Smith decided that I should be excluded from the United Kingdom. No explanation has been offered as to why, of all the people in the world, I was selected for inclusion in the list of those so excluded. I was not consulted about or even informed of this decision at the time. The first I heard of this was when a press release was published on 5 May 2009. The press release stated that I, Michael Savage, provoked others to commit crimes, that I sought to provoke others to serious criminal acts, and that I fostered hatred which might lead to intercommunity violence. These allegations are entirely untrue and extremely damaging. They are the subject of a defamation complaint against the Home Office and Ms. Smith. I am advised that these allegations are serious and that should I press my claim, I am likely to recover a very substantial award in damages. It is particularly disturbing that the press release containing these serious allegations has not been removed from the website of the Home Office, despite repeated requests for this to be done and the complete failure of the Home Office to substantiate the allegations. Again, this is Michael Savage, the only American media figure banned from entering Britain, and this is a letter I wrote to the Prime Minister, which I'm going to rewrite to the new Prime Minister. Let me continue. As you will understand, I was shocked to find my name listed with known murderers and terrorists. Shocked because in my 15-year radio career, it's now 21 years, I have never advocated violence, nor have my words ever led to violence. Shocked because I was put on a list with a Hamas murderer who killed two young Israeli parents and then assaulted and killed their four-year-old daughter with a rifle butt. Shocked because my name was listed alongside Russian skinheads who glorified their murder of immigrants, it was particularly astonishing to me to see this happening in the land that I have so long admired, the land of the Magna Carta, the land of the Mother of Parliaments, and the land of the great Winston Churchill. I am not an extremist. I am one of the most successful radio presenters in the United States with over 10 million listeners. Prior to becoming a radio presenter 21 years ago, I was a nutritionist and botanist. I have two master's degrees in medical botany and medical anthropology and a PhD in epidemiology and nutritional ethnomedicine from the University of California. I am the published author of over 25 books on these and related subjects. As a scientist, I have helped to rescue rainforests in the South Pacific and I've cataloged hundreds of disappearing medicinal plants around the world. In fact, Kew Gardens in England is home to one of my rare collections of such plants. I am a passionate believer in free speech, and it was a great honor to receive the prestigious Freedom of Speech Award by Talkers Magazine in 2007. It has been said by Ms. Smith that I advocated killing Muslims. She arrived at this conclusion by taking a statement I made completely out of context. I do not advocate killing Muslims or indeed anyone. I would never have been allowed to broadcast in the United States, nor would I have gained the popularity I have if I did, or if my views otherwise provoke criminal acts or intercommunity violence. It seems to me that the most likely explanation for inclusion on the list was a desire that it be comprised of individuals of a mixture of ethnic origins, religions, and nationalities, and that I was identified and chosen solely to give the list a politically correct balance. That, of course, would be a wholly unfair and arbitrary way to proceed, particularly given that there were no proper grounds to exclude me. I have been heartened by the vast support that I have received from the British public. It is clear that the British public value the fact that they live in a country that recognizes free speech and are appalled at the arbitrary way in which a decision to exclude me has been made. My listeners in the United States have also been shocked at the decision of Ms. Smith. This has caused great damage to the reputation of the United Kingdom in my country. They, like me, cannot believe that the land of Magna Carta would have been reduced to this level. One listener in particular <clears throat> wrote to me and told me that he has canceled a $5 million order for equipment manufactured in the UK 
and is also going to cancel two additional machinery orders valued at $2.2 million each in light of this decision. I note that Ms. Smith has resigned as Home Secretary, and a new Home Secretary has taken over the role. I have today made an application to the new Home Secretary to consider reconsider my exclusion as a matter of urgency. By the way, that was never done. I'm still on the list. Can I continue? It's another page long. Actually, it's a half a page. It's, it's a document that has to be read on the radio because many of you are going to YouTube it. And you're going to say Michael Savage appeals to the new prime minister to take his name off the ban list. So here's the rest of it and the conclusion. As a student of the history of the United Kingdom, I am aware that in 1945, Winston Churchill said the following, quote, no socialist government conducting the entire life and industry of the country could afford to allow free, sharp or violently worded expressions of public discontent. They would have to fall back on some form of Gestapo, no doubt very humanely directed in the first instance, and this would nip opinion in the bud. It would stop criticism as it reared its head, and it would gather all the power to the Supreme Party and the party leaders, rising like stately pinnacles above their vast bureaucracies of civil servants, no longer servants and no longer civil, close quote. It seems to me that the illiberal attitude of Ms. Smith in this case evokes the worst fears of Mr. Churchill. I also noted that in your moving speech at the D-Day Memorial on Saturday, you stated, quote, tyranny may suppress, it cannot endure forever. Dictatorship may for a time have the power to dictate, but it will not in the end decide the course of the human journey, close quote. I believe that little could be more tyrannical than the arbitrary and unfair exercise of power to exclude someone from a country for the purposes of suppressing free speech. Here's my last paragraph. My family and I are both suffering from this grave injustice. For these reasons, I respectfully appeal to you to prevail upon the new Home Secretary to address the injustice caused by Ms. Smith and remove forth, forthwith my name from the list of excluded individuals, yours faithfully, Michael Savage. I have never heard anything from the Prime Minister, which was not a complete surprise. I am still banned from entering Britain. I, Michael Savage, am the only member of the American media so banned. Fox News refuses to acknowledge it. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. There is no greater Anglophile than I, Michael Savage. And isn't it ironic that they let haters in? Many of them Muslims who hate England burn the flag, attack their military, spit on their war memorials, and a patriot like I am banned from England? Yeah, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more because I disclosed, I discovered something in my quest to remove my name from this despicable list. I found secret emails which disclosed how the British government actually colluded to destroy my name and reputation. I wasn't alone, by the way. There were many people who came to my aid, including the ACLU. The only ones who didn't come to my aid, by the way, were the conservative talk show hosts who are jealous. They have no principles whatsoever when it comes to competition. Think about it. Even the ACLU came to my aid to no avail, but at least they said it was wrong. None of the others did. Blimbo didn't. Limpo didn't do it. So let me read you something. Michael Fabricant, member of British Parliament, was quoted. I was in every British newspaper. This was a huge story. And here's what he said. The things of which she, Jackie Smith, accuses Mike Savage are also illegal in the U.S., and he has not faced prosecution there. Does she realize how ludicrous her ban is and the disrepute into which she has put this country in the eyes of many right-seeing and indeed left-seeing people in the United States? The ban against Savage makes us look so infantile. So pathetic. What are we, some sort of kindergarten needs to be protected against these dangerous American radio shows, said Boris Johnson, journalist, the London Telegraph. All right, you get the picture. I'm painting a short picture for you. They accused me of a thought crime. And Fox fumbled it. And Cardinal Pastor Niemöller noted this in Germany. He was a pastor and a German during the Nazi regime. And he... Uh, movingly encapsulated the apathy, apathy of the people, including himself, as Hitler gained more power. Here's what he said. He said, when the Nazis came for the communists, I remained silent. I was not a communist. 
Then they locked up the Social Democrats. I remained silent. I was not a Social Democrat. Then they came for the trade unionists. I did not protest. I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews. I did not speak out. I was not a Jew. When they came for me, there was no one left to speak for me. So first they come for the conservative talk show host, and you did not speak up? Because why? You're not a conservative talk show host? But as the poem goes, my dear listener, by the time they come to you liberals, there is no one left to speak up for you. So that's it. That's the, the essence of the whole story. I'm not complaining. I'm not crying. I'm not whining. But I am going to struggle again, now that we have a conservative government in England, to appeal to Cameron, now that he no longer has to beg the, uh, the, the, the left to make policy to get my name off the list. And by the way, if I am lucky enough to have my name removed from this despicable list of, of banned individuals, I will bring an audience to England. We'll all go there together. I don't know how many of you, 500, 1,000. Maybe we'll rent a ship and we will arrive in England together and we'll unfurl the American flag and the British flag together and see a unity that they haven't seen since World War II. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I have a dream. I have a dream. Okay. Let's go to KSFO. Ty, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Aloha, Dr. Savage. Ty, uh, in Hawaii, listen to KSFO online. Um, I would like to say that um, if thinking is a crime, uh, it certainly is not violent, and uh, I don't agree with the ban on you. Well, I appreciate that, and we'll send you a copy of Countdown to Mecca, which should be in the bookstores. We'll find out if they make them, if they're allowed in Hawaii. I don't know. Is Countdown to Mecca permitted in Hawaiian bookstores? Aloha. When I come back, Michelle Obama's letting loose on race in her graduation speeches once again, playing the victim and playing the race card, getting a twofer. What a dealer she'd be in Las Vegas to deal two cards at once. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Nothing compared to what folks across the country are dealing with every single day. Those nagging worries that you're going to get stopped or pulled over for absolutely no reason. The fear that your job application will be overlooked because of the way your name sounds. Shame on you, you race The agony you. of sending your kids to schools that Lawyer. no longer be separate but are far from equal. May the first the realization stop race baiting. that no matter how far you rise in life, how hard you work to be a good person, a good parent, a good citizen, for some folks, it will never be enough. How do you feel about a first lady that is this a hysterically angry and steaming people up while cops are getting killed? There's an epidemic of cop killings by blacks right, way, right now. Sorry. If you don't like what I just said, check the statistics. Funeral in New York, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And she's still putting out the big lie of Al Sharpton and that gang that you're going to get stopped for no reason. So the cops are now afraid to do their job, so they're getting killed. The United States is in a civil war right now. And if you don't know it, you will know it very soon. Coming to a neighborhood near you. Joe on WABC, go ahead, please. Michael, how are you? Uh, Michael, just a quick comment about your letter to Great Britain. Uh, unfortunately, Great Britain uh, surrendered their country without the Muslim world ever firing a shot. They are in such fear of offending that they stifle the voice of people that speak the truth. And well, I found an email from Gordon Brown. We have the emails. I spent a lot of money. And my lawyers found an email from then Prime Minister Gordon Brown, which said we must balance the list. And they chose me white conservative Michael Savage to put on the list to balance out the Muslims who've been banned from England. Did you know any of that? I didn't know any of that, and I think it's outrageous. But I found the email. I have it. I published it in my book. Well, they, picked me, they picked me as a scapegoat, in other words. The way the Nazis scapegoated Jews, that's how I was scapegoated by the liberals in England. Well, I look forward to reading your book because I didn't know that. What you're saying makes me sick. And I, I wish it should make you sick because, by the way, I had the support of 99% of the thinking world at the time, including Muslims in England who were offended by it, by the if way. I, if I may just say one thing real quick, I wanted to thank you. I had, uh, I'm a police officer in New York, and I flew out to Oakland years ago to attend a funeral, and you were gracious enough to take me and a few of my friends to dinner. 
And I hope when did we? Where did we go? I remember. Oh, you guys are wearing all your. Was it in the North Beach restaurant? We went to uh, down to the wharf. It was a place. Oh, I don't go there anymore. The guy I knew died. I never go there again. Sorry. But nevertheless, no. That was a that was a beautiful night. I don't remember that. I mean, I don't remember the day. I remember being together and all the all the medals and all, Joe. Yeah, well, well, you got a lot of funerals to go to now, thanks to Al Sharpton. He's getting, he's doing very well, isn't he? All the white police are getting knocked off, like one a week now. Yeah. He's been, you know, maybe he has a notch on his wall somewhere. Yeah. Maybe he high fives with Eric Holder every time another white cop gets killed. I don't know. It's it's the hypocrisy that that comes out of that man's mouth. And my sarcasm is not going to be muted by Michelle Obama or any of the other race baiters or haters. They're killing our police. They're killing our children's brains. Unreal. God bless you. Thank you very much. And you. Can All right. Yeah. It. Thank me very much for however long I'm able to get away with it, telling the truth. Wait till wait till she hears about this, going on and on about it, sniveling about how oppressed she is. It's a it's embarrassment. Listen to clip ten. Here is your first lady, not mine. Listen to ten. It can feel isolating. It can make you feel like your life somehow doesn't matter. That you're like the invisible man that Tuskegee grad Ralph Ellison wrote about all those years ago. Shame on you. And as we've seen over the past few years, those feelings are real. They're rooted in decades of structural challenges. And you that can't even say the word. Feel frustrated. Structural. You almost tripped on the word. You and the mayor of Baltimore, the, the, the prosecutor, they gave you the word structural. The liberals from, from Harvard wrote structural. You know, it's sickening. It's just sickening that we have this going on. And tie it with corruption. You know, I could live with it if it wasn't so hypocritical. If she didn't have 72 private personal aides, if she didn't abuse the taxpayer with her trips, if her mother didn't live there for free, if she didn't insult America on a daily basis, I'd say, all right, so that's the way it is. But she's a hypocrite, a stone hypocrite. That's the part that bothers me, is the hypocrisy of this couple. They're royalty, absolute royalty, and they act like they're oppressed minorities. What has to happen until we finally say enough of this crap? Enough already, Michelle. Stop it. It's an old act. Am I the only one outraged by this woman? Now, her talk about isolation, she's implying that this sense of isolation is limited to black people. She's telling college graduates at Tuskegee that if they feel isolated, it's because of racism. Does that mean that whites are not feeling isolation in their lives? Does it mean Hispanics can't feel isolation? Asians? Of course not. Humans are isolated in our society. We're all individuals sitting alone. There's no unity anymore. But she wants blacks to think that it's because of racism that, they, that they're part of the human condition. That, excuse me, that it's not part of the human condition that they feel this alienation, but it's because of institutional racism. This is pure, unadulterated propaganda, and it's propagandist uh, 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 lies of the lowest order. Okay, she's an embarrassment to the word first lady. So what is she trying to do by going to a all black college and talking about racism like this? Tell me what she's trying to do. Same thing Al Sharpton's been doing. The same thing Eric Holder did. You can get, you can get the picture, right? They're violating the, the human rights of other Americans is what they're doing. She is violating the human rights of non-black people in this country. Do you know that? She's spitting in the face of our humanity. I'm sick of it. There's nothing not only not uplifting about this woman's speech. It is the most divisive speech I've heard since last year when she gave another one. That was another doozy. Shay on WMAL in Washington, D.C., what's your opinion? Am I wrong or am I right on Michelle Obama's speech? You're right. You're absolutely right, Dr. Savage. I mean, I find that speech deplorable, and I'm black. I, 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 you're absolutely right about her being... I don't understand it. I thought we were past this kind of race baiting. You know, there's a whole generation of young black people like you who understand we're past that, but they're dragging us back 30 years, 40 years. In a, in a, in absolutely. Sick. But Shay, why is she, Shay, why is she dragging us backwards? Why do you think her and Obama, her husband rather, specialize in dragging the nation backwards rather than moving us forwards? What is she doing? I, I wish I knew the answer to that question. It, it, it boggles my mind. Someone from, in that position 
can uh, uh, be so divisive and, and purposely do it. It's not by accident that these things are happening. It's, all, it's absolutely on purpose. And it's- but wait, during this speech just the other day at Tuskegee, she talks about you poor graduates going to be pulled over for no reason. Again, she's putting out the big lie about evil police. Instead of saying we uh, uh, take a moment of silence for the two officers just killed in Tuskegee, one of whom was black, by the way, one was white, killed by three black people or two black people, as it may be. Three were arrested. Who knows how many shot? Why didn't she have a moment of silence for the dead police in New York City? The dead cop who was shot in the face or these two dead cops in, uh, in Hattiesburg. Why does she continue to put out this hatred and these lies? It's shocking, by the way. Is there no one in the media who's willing to say the king has no clothes and nor does the queen? Well, uh, you are. You've been saying it, and I, and I truly... Well, why am I saying it? Do you think I, I, I want to say this? Do you think I want them to hate me? Do you think I want to put my life at risk again in America by criticizing the queen? No, somebody has to be a truth-teller, and that's what America needs more of is truth-tellers. Well, it's funny you use the word truth-teller because I have to give it to you, my book, Countdown to Mecca, just out today, because Jack Hatfield had a television show called Truth-Tellers. Did you know that? Sure. <laughs> No, no, my character, Jack Hatfield, fearless San Francisco freelance journalist, defrocked former host of the cable TV program Truth Tellers. I don't know if you know that from one of my books, but you're getting a copy of Countdown to Mecca. So that's it. Now what's coming tomorrow? 855-407-282 is the phone. I don't know the phone, the phone number. Okay, so liberals over conservatives, 9 to 1 at college commencements. Top 100 colleges and universities uh, analyzed by the Young America's Foundation revealed that in the top 50 schools, as ranked by U.S. News and World Report, liberal speakers outnumbered conservatives 9 to 1. Among the top 10, all speakers were liberal. In the top 100, it was 6 to 1. Schools also favored Obama officials, including First Lady Michelle Obama, see she's allowed to speak this hatred, and VP Biden, another genius. Nine Obama officials were slated to give commencement addresses this year. Over eight years of the Bush presidency, you ready, liberals? You got your pens out? Over eight years of the Bush presidency, just 14 officials spoke at the grad ceremonies of the top 100 schools. I can go on and on. You can read it yourself. Washington Examiner has a summary. So higher education has been poisoned by the radical left who has stolen the very name higher from the connection to education. So that's it. That's the world we live in, a one-party system. And by the way, the liberals like it. You don't understand this. You don't know that they're fascists, that they're... They may be nice. This is something that, that really puzzles many people. Many liberals are actually, quote, nice people. I was in a restaurant the other day, remain unnamed, not the North Beach restaurant, somewhere else. I went alone Friday night, not even with Teddy. I just wanted to sit and drink alone and eat alone. Okay, did you ever get one of those moods? So it was late now. It was closer to 9 o'clock. They sit me at a table by myself by the window, which they know I like because I got to push the window open. And I had a nice vodka. I'm waiting for the dinner. Okay, so the table next to me. It's a crowded restaurant. People can say what they want. It's a free, free, uh, free society. I don't know whether the guy recognized me. I don't know whether he was just a loud mouth. But usually after two glasses of wine, they figure they have a broadcast license in a restaurant. They don't understand that they're offending other people by expressing very loudly their opinions in a restaurant. I do it for a living, but you have an option. You could turn the radio dial off. If you're sitting in a restaurant, do you want to sit next to someone right wing, left wing who is espousing politics? I never do it, ever. Ask anyone who knows me. They go out with me. I never talk politics in a restaurant, ever. Guy starts in and here's what he says. He says, you know, Gavin Newsom was way ahead of the curve on gay marriage. He came out so far ahead of everyone else. I gulped. I said, oh my God, no, I can't believe. And I just sat down. The bread was there. The soup was there. The, the drink was there. The ice was there. The garlic was there. The onion was there. You know, like I lined things up. Everything was ready. Here he went. And he said, and by the way, to his, to his uh, uh, others, I don't know who they were. He looked like a, uh, a lawyer to me, like a white haired kind of liberal lawyer from uh, New York City. That's as close as I can get to what I really want to say. Opens up his fat mouth and goes on. He says, and by the way, Newsom is so far ahead of everyone, he wants to legalize all drugs. And the morons with him nodded their head. Mm, mm. I got up. I didn't say a word to him because I'm not there to debate. I go to the owner. I say, 
could you please move me to the other room? I can't take listening to this guy. Put me in the bar. Sure enough, puts me in the bar, small table. I'm doing fine. Halfway through the meal, there's a white couple next to them. By the way, all whites. Next to me, another liberal couple. They're talking about some cheap vacation. They're going to go on to Salmon Lake or this. I don't know what. Some vacation that costs nothing. All right, there are people with no money. And not everyone can go to Monte Carlo like the, the first lady. Not everyone can afford to, to tour the pyramids on the government dime. They're talking about some cheap vacation here. I don't know, whatever. It's their business. I tune it out. I'm reading a book. Then toward the end, just before the dessert, when she had three wines in her, the white lady says to the passive husband, I'm shocked that there are any conservatives in the state of California. Do you know that where I come from in San Diego, there are many, there are still conservatives left down there? And he goes, mm, it's terrible, it's terrible. There are still conservatives in the state. Whereupon I, thank God, was through with my dinner. I left an obscenely large tip and walked out. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I didn't start out as the fully firm formed first lady who stands before you today. No, no, I had my share of bumps along oh, the way. But as potentially oh, the first African-American first lady, I was also the focus of another set of questions and speculations, conversations God. sometimes rooted in the fears and misperceptions of others. Oh, was I too loud or too angry or too emasculating? Yes, to all three. Any other questions? Yes, you are too loud. Yes, you're too angry. And yes, you are too emasculating. Any other questions, Ms. Obama? So, you know, if it was just a woman, who cares what anyone says? Or Oprah Winfrey, who would pay attention to him? But this is the first lady. Their job is different than others. Their job is to bring America together, not separate us and divide us and turn one race against the other. Don't you understand that? Okay, whatever. Kyra on KSFO, go ahead. You've got the floor. What's on your mind? You're savage. I am in complete agreement with you. I cannot what she represents for the United States of America. There's nothing ladylike about her, even before she's now got her new roots of baiting everybody. She, it's absolutely insane. I come from... Kyra, she has 72 personal assistants. Freeloaders in the... She has a freeloader in the White House. She has her own mother living there for free. I've never heard of that. Well, that, we know why, because he's he's got, let's put it to you this way, some roots in Africa. And, uh, you know, he's got the anti-colonialist colonialist mentality. So what can I say? The country has been penetrated and taken over by an anti-American communist regime that is so stealthy and so good at what they're doing that the average person doesn't even see it, even while they're openly fomenting revolution on a daily basis, Kyra. Kyra, I'm sending, you, I'm sending you my new novel, Countdown to Mecca, out today or tomorrow. I don't know the day. It better be in the bookstores by tomorrow. I really mean that. Anyway, look, folks, you know what happens now. I'm sorry. Many of you are going to get the, the bad feelings. It's coming. In a few cities, the show ends now. And in many cities, it stays for another big hour. I'm sorry I have to leave you. Flood the station manager demanding a third hour. What can I do? I give a third hour. They should take it. All right, I'll be back. Be here or be nowhere. Michael Savage, Band of Britain. Meds that cause memory loss next. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, 
culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I didn't start out as the fully firm, formed first lady who stands before you today. No, no, I had my share of bumps along the way. But as potentially the first African-American first lady, I was also the focus of another set of questions and speculations, conversations sometimes rooted in the fears and misperceptions of others. Was I too loud or too angry or too emasculating? Blue Monday, how I hear Blue Monday. Yes to all three. Got to work, lack of sleep all day. But your gravest uh, deficit is your divisiveness. You still haven't accepted all the benefits of this country. You still haven't accepted that it were not for the white people who are hoodwinked by you and your husband, you wouldn't be first lady. They, they voted for you. You weren't elected only by black people. All the racists you hate out there voted you in. Do you remember that? You forgot that already, huh? It's, uh, it's worth playing because unless someone points this out, it's going to get worse. It's only the beginning of graduation season. I can't wait till that dingbat Nancy Pelosi speaks again. And after that, she almost burnt Oakland to the ground by telling them to be, what was the word again? I keep forgetting the word. Disruptors. Dummy. Dummy. Be a disruptor. Yeah, they, they almost burnt Oakland to the ground a, a week ago. The loser of bums on the bottom. The hordes, the mobs of nobodies. Wasn't bad enough what happened in Baltimore. She's going to get up now and want, wants more. Instead of bringing the people together, instead of saying what happened in Baltimore was terrible, let justice take its course. Instead of telling the kids at Tuskegee to go out there uh, because they've never had a greater opportunity in the history of Africans in America, there's never been a greater opportunity for Africans in America than today. Look at me. Look at my husband. Look how far we've come because this is not a racist nation. And you can go as far as your talents and your uh, wishes will take you. That's what she should have said instead. Once again, she wraps herself in the victim. What if we had the first Jewish president? I don't know who. I'm going to make some, I, I don't know who. What if a day comes we have the first Jewish president and the Jewish first lady gets up there and she starts complaining again about being Jewish and being picked on and that people don't like her because of her, her, her mother's accent or whatever. The, I mean, how would, how would the nation react to a Jewish first lady saying the same things, like I was subject to another set of questions, or uh, am I too uh, loud or too angry or too emasculating? And what would America say to a thing like that? And what when we have our first Hispanic president, if there's an Hispanic first lady who's as low class as her, who gets up there and starts talking again about racism when she's first lady, ipso facto, if there was such bad racism, she wouldn't be first lady, would she? since whites make up 68 or more percent of the population, by definition, the nation has no racism left in it, except from her, maybe, and her cohorts, who are steaming up everybody in the country. Everywhere you turn, all they want to do is turn everyone against each other. Anyway, you get the picture. It's kind of repugnant. What I want to do now is talk about something positive. My new novel, Countdown to Mecca, because it's out. I worked very hard on it. It's the last in the series. Many of you bought... Uh, the previous editions of A Time for War and Abuse of Power. It's a thriller. It's a novel. It's power fiction tinged with terrorism and intrigue with an old-school rough-and-tumble journalist as its hero. A thriller sure to score a bullseye with its target audience, said Publishers Weekly, of the earlier one. A fast-paced international thriller whose story spans the globe Dr. Savage is at a home run with abuse of power. The story grips the reader and delivers the goods. Free Republic. They love my first two. So I think this one is the best and the last. So I gave an interview this morning to set the record straight because I'm, I'm, I'm a little fearful of what the left is going to do with the title. So let's listen to the rest of the interview right here, right now on the Savage Nation. In Countdown to Mecca, I introduced a new character called Sammy Hatfield. That's Jack's half-brother. Sammy is a former Marine who was in a motorcycle accident living on the proceeds of the lawsuit. And he has a neighbor, a call girl named Anna. And Anna's a Russian prostitute. She happens to be working the military generals, okay, in a hotel in San Francisco. 
And she overhears one word, one word she shouldn't have heard. And they're now after her. She runs into Sammy's apartment. And Jack realizes after trying to help them, he stumbled upon a conspiracy to destroy Mecca. And now he and a group of like-minded friends on the fringes of the law, including a new character, a Jewish gangster <laughs> that I introduced called Saul Minsky in San Francisco, race, okay, to stop the plot and stop them from hurting the call girl and the clown, or else the world will collapse. I would say Countdown to Mecca is a gripping page turner, and I think every one of my listeners would love it. I'm not saying buy the book for me. I'm saying buy the book for you. The main point of your novel is preventing Mecca from being blown up. Why is your publisher so worried about this book? Because the title says Countdown to Mecca. And as you know, the liberals who are funded by very evil forces who have tried to destroy me before, they've tried to destroy me for 21 years. They've misquoted me, so I'm banned from Britain. The only member of the American media banned from Britain. They're going to do it again. And so the publisher wants nothing to do with it, in my opinion. I, I can't go into the exact details. I can't prove this, nor am I trying to smear the publisher. But the fact of the matter is something's wrong with the picture. This book, given what's happened in this country with the attack on Pam Geller, with the other attacks by radical Muslims, with the DHS warning us there's going to be a lone wolf attack any day, this book should be trumpeted by the publisher, not downplayed. Dr. Savage, we're one week removed from an ISIS attack in the country, and your books seem to be prophetic in seeing events like that happen. How do you anticipate events like that? Yeah, I'm a prophet without knowing it. An ancient Jewish prophet come back to life. I'm either Ezekiel or Isaiah. All I know is that sometimes things are on time, sometimes they're too early, sometimes they're too late. I think Countdown to Mecca is right on time to warn the world the danger we're in because the radical Muslims are pushing this country they're tempting the country. They're actually daring the country. They're actually mocking the country. And I don't blame them for mocking us, given a president who won't even call them Islamic, given a DHS that spends more money on global warming than on terrorism, given an FBI that's more concerned with returning Christian soldiers than Muslim sleeper cells. We are vulnerable. The Trojan horse is here. And guess what? It's about to bite. And that's why I wrote Countdown to Mecca. It's a warning. And I hope every one of my listeners who understands what I'm trying to do will go out and check out a copy in one of the local bookstores or look, look for it on Amazon.com. What do you think is a unique quality that this novel, Countdown to Mecca, that points out the threat that we're facing as a country? Hmm. I think the unique quality is talking about a, a, a group of generals, U.S. generals, who become a greater threat than than ISIS, in that they're patriotic, they're brave, they're daring, they dare to stand up to the president, and they plot this. And do you think it's not possible? Well, I don't know if it's possible anymore for, the, for this to happen, given that Obama has purged the military of so many great men and replaced them with incompetence or with women who can't even fire a rifle. But the fact of the matter is, Theoretically, it's possible. It's happened before of a general's plot, hasn't it? So, yeah, generals do these things in other countries. Since Obama has hollowed out America, weakened us, made us vulnerable to an attack, I think the, the issue here is I'm trying to warn America that... Even, well, actually, who I'm speaking to here is not only the reader in America. I'm speaking to the military in this book, to be frank with you. And I'm actually thinking out for them what would happen if they did make such a th crazy plot as to attack Mecca during a Hajj. I'm trying to show them through thought, through argument, through reason. I have a great scene in Israel because there are Israelis involved in the plot. Israeli uh, Mossad are involved with them. And there's a group of brilliant Israelis and brilliant Americans arguing with the CIA and the generals in this bunker in Israel about all the pros and cons about doing such a crazy thing, right? So I actually work out all of the arguments, pro and con, for striking the enemy in Mecca. And you'll see how I think through the characters. Shakespeare couldn't have done a better job than I did in Countdown to Mecca, in my humble opinion. 
This novel has a very serious message, but you also have a lot of fun. How do you strike that balance in this type of novel? I introduced some fun characters, the hooker and the clown. And my original editor told me, drop the hooker and drop the clown. I swear to God, then I had to change editors at the same company, a big argument. He said, I don't like the hooker, I don't like the clown. I said, then you don't like Countdown to Mecca. Because we have to have fun. It's a novel. This is not a boring nonfiction book. This is meant for people to pick up and read and enjoy reading it. What a movie this would make. I mean, let's be clear. I'm boycotted in Hollywood, right? They, they should have made a movie a long time ago out of A Time for War. It's dramatic. It's set in San Francisco. It's got every element. Sex, romance, excitement, terrorism. Uh, I guess Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg wouldn't touch it for obvious political reasons. So this book reads like a movie script. For those people who like action, Countdown to Mecca is it. Dr. Savage, you've written so many best-selling nonfiction books, and now you also have the trilogy of the Jack Hatfield novels. How do you feel that this adds to your legacy? I can't tell what anyone's legacy is going to be in our crazed, debased, degenerate society. A girl who shows her behind probably has a bigger legacy than I do in our debased society. Take a look at who's running the media. What does legacy mean when you have degenerates running the media? What does a legacy mean when you have anti-Americans running the media? What does it mean when you have a pope who says things that make Fidel Castro say he'll go back to church? The world has been turned upside down by the most demonic president imaginable. If I were to write a fictional novel about a stealth anti-American who becomes president, I couldn't have done a better story than the life story of Barack Obama. So you say legacy? I don't know what anyone's legacy is going to be. Not when you have so many anti-Americans, anti-males, anti-Western people writing the history of America today. They're revising it by the second. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Okay, let's say you take a prescription drug. Do you suffer from... Blurred vision, memory loss, hallucinations, mental confusion, brain fog, incoherent speech. You have trouble remembering anything. Do you? You ever fall into any one of those categories of, you know, you can't remember something after it? Well, let me explain something to you. There are many kinds of prescription drugs that can cause memory loss and plenty of OTC uh, medications as well. Prescription drugs cause over 100,000 deaths a year and cause another 1.9 million people to experience side effects that they have to be hospitalized. So let me tell you the story about this, the kind of drugs that cause memory loss. You may not know there's a connection between a drug you take. And by the way, liberals don't pay attention to me because I'm only a conservative with a real PhD from a great university. I, I, I would appreciate if liberals turn the radio off now. I'd like you to do the opposite of what I'm telling sane people to do right now. If you take a drug that starts with anti, such as antihistamine, antidepressant, antipsychotic, antibiotic, antispasmodic, antihypertensive, these drugs are likely affecting your acetylcholine levels. So what is acetylcholine? Acetylcholine is the primary nerve transmitter involved with memory and learning. And when you're low in acetylcholine, you become forgetful. You can't concentrate or think of the right word. You ever have that happen? It could be the drug you're taking. But serious acetylcholine deficiencies are associated with dementia and Alzheimer's. Acetylcholine activity is the target of Alzheimer's drugs, which block the breakdown of this brain chemical. In other words, anti-Alzheimer's drugs try to keep as much acetylcholine operational in your system as possible. So now you're taking a drug that blocks the action of acetylcholine, and they're known as anticholinergic. So maybe you have blurred vision, constipation, confusion, lightheadedness, difficulty starting and continuing to urinate, uh, memory loss, loss of bladder control. These could be related to your drugs. And by the way, these drugs include statin drugs. And I want to talk about the great cholesterol myth another day because uh, perhaps the single worst group of drugs for your brain are statin drugs. Many of you are on statin drugs and you think you're doing fine, but it could be affecting your memory. Very important for you to know that. 
Did you know that one quarter of your brain is made up of cholesterol? You think it's a poison, don't you? Well, no. Cholesterol is necessary for memory, learning, and fast thinking. So cholesterol-lowering drugs affect the brain negatively. And that's a whole separate topic. So which drugs actually cause memory loss? For Parkinson's, for epilepsy, for painkillers, sleeping pills, benzodiazepines, benzodiazepines, quinidine, quinidine, naproxen, steroids, antibiotics, especially the quinolones, antihistamines, high blood pressure drugs, insulin, beta blockers, methyl dopa, antipsychotics such as Haldol and Melaril, tricyclic antidepressants, lithium, barbiturates, amitol, nebutol, secondol, phenobarb, chemotherapy drugs. Very important you know this. By the way, this list was assembled by Richard C. Mose, PhD, former ch vice chairman of the Department of Psychiatry at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine. So liberals, pay no attention to what I've just said. I want you to go out today, liberals, and I want you to ask your doctor to give you more drugs that limit your um, acetylcholine. Do the opposite of what I say, please. Please do more. Be more of a mentally ill person. Take more of these medications and don't know what's going on. Now, not all medications that cause memory loss are prescription only. Men, many over-the-counter drugs can cause memory loss by the same mechanism, by blocking the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. And these OTC remedies that you should watch out for, they're anticholinergic, are Advil, PM, Benadryl, Claritin, Dramamine, Excedrin, PM, Nitol, Pep, Pepsid AC, Samonex, Tagamet, Tylenol PM, Unisom, Zantac. It's interesting, I have severe allergies. And as a result of studying this, I wound up taking a different anti-allergy drug, one that does not affect my acetylcholine levels, which is why I'm sharper than I've ever been. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Based on their limited notion of the world, and my husband and I know how frustrating that experience can be. We both felt the sting of those daily slights throughout our entire lives. The folks oh who crossed my. the street in fear of their safety. The clerks who kept a close eye on us in all those department stores. The people at formal events who assumed we were the help. And those who have questioned our intelligence, our honesty, even our love of this country. Well, you sure love the country. How stupid can we be that we gave you Air Force Two to gallivant around the world? Of course you love the country. I'd love it too. Have the mother in the White House at public expense and no one dare say a word. What could be better? Sure you love the country now because it's uh, catering to you, bowing down to you. Yeah, we question your loyalty to America. We question your husband's policies because that's the American way. And if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. Isn't that an old American statement? If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. Well, apparently Michelle Obama can't take the heat. No, anything anyone says to her, any kind of political commentary or criticism, is apparently to her racism. And you notice how her accent changed in front of the Tuskegee audience, sort of like Hillary. She has a, a, a lady of many accents. That's pretty interesting. Here she grew up in a black middle class family, went to Ivy League colleges, and all of a sudden the accent changes to an innuendo style accent. Whatever. It's sickening. It's disgusting. It shows she's immature. It shows she was never qualified to be first lady. It shows you how far she's drug uh, the, the, the office of the presidency down to her husband's level. But there's more to it than meets the eye. This is their stock and trade. In addition to attacking police, and oh, by the way, cop killings have doubled as a result of the president, Barack Obama, uh, let us see who else. Bill de Blasio in New York. Oh, who else? Al Sharpton and everyone in the media and their hate campaigns, which have been launched for two years now. Now cops are getting killed on a regular basis. I couldn't sleep last night thinking about the pain of the family in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, of the two cops who stopped the car in an ordinary traffic stop. And because of Barack Obama's hate and because of Eric Holder's hate attack upon, upon police, and Al Sharpton's vicious, vicious, vicious scum mouth. The cops are no longer protecting themselves. They're letting the vermin kill them first. Thank you, Sharpton. 
And this is all she can talk about. It's about her again. Instead of apologizing for what she's done to America, how she's insulted the office of the First Lady, instead she goes to the Tuskegee Institute, an all-black college, which is interesting unto itself. I don't know of any all-white colleges, do you? But nevertheless, she goes to an all-black college where the kids are generally very smart and very good students. And instead of leaving them alone to go forward in their lives as equals, she tells them they're not really equal and that there's a lot of racism in America. All right, what can I do about it? Talk about it. That's all. All I can do is talk about it. Listen to this. Listen to clip number two of your first lady, Michelle Obama. Listen to this. It's sickening. I didn't start out as the fully firm, formed first lady who no, stands before you either. today. No, no, I had no, my share no. of bumps along the way. Oh, you're but suffering. But as potentially the first African-American first lady, I was also the focus of another set of questions and speculations, speculations, conversations sometimes rooted in the fears and misperceptions of others. No, not fear. Was I too loud or too angry or too emasculating? Yes, you are. You're all of those things. And it has nothing to do with fears or misperceptions. Anyone who doesn't see that in you is not seeing reality. Michelle Obama, the picked upon first lady who was just so hurt, just so injured, and just so oppressed from racist America. Listen to 04. So yeah, I planted a garden and hula hooped on the White House lawn with kids. I did some mom dancing on TV. I celebrated military kids with Kermit the Frog. I asked folks across the country to wear their alma mater's t-shirts for college signing day. But what does that have to do with why you're the most despised first lady in American history? Why don't you talk about why you are despised and why you're not trusted? How about your anger and your hatred towards white people, which literally pours out of your mouth every time you open it? Number two, how about your abuse of power? How about the fact that you have 71 to 72 personal assistants at public expense? How about the fact that everyone knows you're a monster behind the scenes? And how about the fact that I can prove it by the fact that you fired your florist? Listen, not all of us are suffering memory loss, Mrs. Obama. In fact, many of us can see exactly who you are. So don't think by telling us about mom dancing on TV, we're going to forget it. Anyway, happy Mother's Day. I had a nice Mother's Day yesterday. I went to the North Beach restaurant. And Teddy loved it. Teddy had a wonderful Mother's Day. I don't know what he ate. He ate a bowl of water and chicken, right? We always get chicken for Teddy. Broiled chicken, no salt, no pepper. And I usually get it first for the dog, and I'm his food taster. It's actually the best appetizer in the, on the menu, so that's why I order it for him. And then I always say it's too hot for the dog. Let me taste it first. <laughs> Usually I'm starving until they feed me. I eat too much bread. I drink too much alcohol. So it's better that I eat the dog's uh, appetizer first. And today is the first day of the rest of my life. And it's the day that Countdown to Mecca is in bookstores. Or they better be there. And you're going to go and be my little soldiers, my armies of the day. I want you to be my armies of the bookstores, ladies especially, I want you to go in and look for Countdown to Mecca. Go to the big chain stores. If the book is not prominently displayed, would you please report to the show? Now, I want to backtrack for a minute. Now that the conservatives have won a plurality in England and do not need the liberal Democrats for their coalition, we are hopeful that Mr. Cameron will finally take Michael Savage's name off the banned in Britain list. Because make no mistake about it, not Rush Limbaugh or one of his girlfriends or boyfriends, or minions. But Michael Savage is the only member of the American media who is not allowed to enter Britain because of the blacklist that they created based upon a smear campaign. And I'm tr still trying to get my name off the list. So I'm working with a major, major newspaper, which I will not mention until it's set in stone. We're going to send a letter to Mr. Cameron because no one in the media knows more about free speech than I. That's also coming... No one in the media has more at stake in what happened in the U.K. in the media than me. Because remember, I'm the only member of the media, I'm proud to tell you, still banned from entering England. And I told you the story. The definitive fight for free speech is me. And how one man stood firm against an entire government to free my name from a list of murderers and terrorists. And I've never freed my name because of Gordon Brown and the scum in the Labor Party. So thank God at least the Labor Party didn't win. But uh, Cameron, who had promised people who knew me, 
he take my name off the list, shamed himself by by not doing so. You know what I'm saying? It's a huge scandal in England. And what's going on in America is very, very uh, near and dear to my heart because of what went on in England. And I know all, an awful lot about free speech. And I want to make a side note. No one in the American media, save one person, came to my defense. I think it was only Laura Ingram on radio who came to my aid. Not the big mouth Rush Limbaugh, the great conservative. He made believe it didn't happen. Because if it's not about him and if he can't capitalize on it in some way or make it part of his show, it's it's of no interest to him. He didn't help me. Certainly uh, uh, Hannity didn't say a word. O'Reilly didn't say a word. No one on Fox News came to my aid. But the preface of the book says the savage fight against censorship. Isn't that interesting? We can talk about Barack Obama's political advisor, Jim Messina, getting credit for leading conservative British Prime Minister David Cameron to an overwhelming victory. <laughs> you get that one? Did you hear what happened today? Four of six Gulf rulers are skipping Obama's Middle East lecture tour. In fact, the new king of Saudi Arabia told them an hour before he's not going. So, you know, the king has no clothes. They can look right through this con man. They know he's a stooge of Iran. And Saudi Arabia is not even going to the conference because he's going to lecture them on human rights. Can you believe this? He's going to lecture them on human rights and not say a word to Iran. So don't tell me we can't see the, the picture. God sees the truth but waits. I see the truth and I don't hesitate to tell it to you like it is because that's my one and only job. Forgive me if you find what I may say slightly offensive at times. I have one job. You know what that job is? Is to keep you listening and tell you like I see it. Call them like I see them. That's my whole job. It's that simple. What else do you want me to talk about? You want me to give you the government party line? I don't work for, for Westinghouse. I don't work for NBC. I don't work for a CBS. I'm not Bill Maher. I'm not one of the, the, uh, the stooges, the government jesters with the fake audiences that every once in a while they throw out a conservative line and make believe that they're really not a government jester. Their own lock, stock, and barrel. They may as well be trained by the CIA to, to put out the rubbish they put out with the laugh lines. It's like Obama in front of a stooge audience. So there it is. So of course you're going to be offended by certain things that people say if you live in a world that's so constrained. All 19 women failed Army Ranger School in its first phase. Boo-hoo. Well, why don't you change the rules? I guess it's a racist white male thing. Ranger School. It's not feminist enough. I think they should make it easier for women to pass the Ranger School. Then anyone could be a Ranger. The way anyone could be a sociology professor. Oh, hey, what's the point? Look, I could do this day in the, my hand behind my back. Liberals... Over conservatives, nine to one at college commencements. Gee, I'm shocked by that. Isn't it odd that I am one of the most distinguished graduates of the University of California at Berkeley with a real PhD with 25, 28 books to my credit, many bestsellers, and I've never been invited to UC Berkeley to give a speech. Instead, they invite liberal slime to give graduation speeches, including the uneducated dolt, Nancy Pelosi, who last year at graduation got up there like the moron she is and said, what was the word she used? Disruptors. I remember it. She said, be a disruptor. Go out there and be a disruptor, said Nancy Pelosi. So they burnt Oakland to the ground. They smashed up cars in Oakland, California. I guess they uh, were, were the disruptors. And do you know why she wanted them to be disruptors? Do you know why Hillary tells them to be wild and free and crazy? Do you know why Al Sharpton wants the cities to burn? Do you know why Obama and Eric Holder want the mobs uh, raging? So they stay away from the White House lawn. You don't understand it. It's called diversion. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from, SwissAmerica.com. All right, we conclude today's broadcast with a positive story. Mighty Fine at 109, America's oldest vet marks birthday with cigar. He happens to be African-American, and in the speech that he gave, he didn't complain about racism, by the way. That was for Obama to do. I'll tell you the story in a minute. 
World War II veteran Richard Overton is seen in his Army uniform in an undated photograph uh, provided by the city of Austin. This is uh, Fox News today. And he said he feels a little stiff from time to time. And he's cut out the whiskey. But other than that, he feels pretty good. He's 109, turned 109 Monday. He said, I get around pretty good, just get a little stiff. I'm doing all right, I guess, Overton told Fox News. He waited at this Austin, Texas home for a car to pick him up and take him to meet Governor Greg Abbott. Going to go see the governor, he added. He wants to talk to me. The World War II veterans' friends and family tossed a birthday party from last week. A hundred people attended. The theme of the day was mighty fine at 109. Well, he served from 1942 to 1945 uh, with stops in Hawaii, Guam, Palau, and Iwo Jima while attaining the rank of sergeant. He saw many of his Army buddies die serving their country, and the rest have passed away since the war ended. He misses the soldiers who served with him in the all-black 188, I think it's the 188th Engineer Aviation Battalion, but they're gone. He said, I'm the only one that can tell a tale now. All the other boys are gone. Well, listen to this. He was born on May 11th, 1906 in Texas in um, Bastrop County. Man worked in the furniture business and then with the Texas Treasury Department uh, after he got out of the Army. He married twice but never fathered any children and still attends church every Sunday. You hear that one? Maybe that has something to do with his longevity. He said, I got good health and I don't take any medicine, he told Fox News. I also stay busy around the yards. I trim trees, help with the horses. The driveways get dirty, so I clean them. I do something to keep myself moving. I don't watch television. You hear this? Overton lights up a dozen cigars a day, but he stopped taking a shot of whiskey in his morning coffee. Don't drink that whiskey anymore, he said. Now, here's the punchline. Here comes the racism. He met President Divider in 2013 at an event at Arlington National Cemetery where the divisive president singled out Overton during his remarks. In other words, he saw him and then he said, uh-oh. Here's what Obama said to sully the day. When the war ended, Richard headed home to Texas to a nation bitterly divided by race, said Obama, and his service on the battlefield was not always matched by the respect that he deserved at home. But this veteran held his head high. He carried on and lived his life with honor and dignity. In other words, typically Obama jumped in and uh, tried to steal the, the, the thunder. Anyway, the oldest living World War II veteran, 109 years old, cigars, booze. But he goes to church every week, you know, trims trees, helps with horses, cleans driveways. You don't watch television. I do everything the reverse. Uh, I watch a lot of television. I never do yard work. I don't clean driveways. I don't smoke cigars. And I hate whiskey. So I don't know. I mean, I don't think I'll make 109. That's for sure. I don't go to church every Sunday. I don't go to synagogue every Saturday. I don't go anywhere. I don't go to houses of worship. I can't handle it. And then once in a while, I miss the house of worship thing. Once, twice a year, I'll go to a house of worship, and I get very sentimental. I think of my deceased parents, my deceased brother, and I... Then you think of your own, you know, the way of all flesh, and you realize no one's a wise guy. And at the end, you know, what are we? Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. You know, no one's above that one, are we? What am I giving you this sermon? Is anyone listening to this anymore? Are they all left already? Were they put on banger already? They, they switched to the wall? They're banging their heads against the wall because I stopped. Uh, I didn't stop anything. I'm doing the show. Anyway, it's been fun. I talked about Teddy at Mother's Day. I read from my novel countdown to mecca and i really would like you to go to the bookstores and look for it i talked about the band in britain update how i'm working with a major newspaper to publish an open letter to the new prime minister and then i disclosed medications that cause memory loss if that's not enough of a show there's always tomorrow good night <laughs>